Thanks for tuning in again today for part two of misconceptions, myths, misunderstandings about vitamin D. Uh, if you listened to or viewed part one, uh, you had a little bit of a flavor that what I wanted to do here is not just sit here and rattle off to you um, the studies and the data on vitamin D. I want to convey to you that there are tremendous misunderstandings, misconceptions, even today, let alone five to six years ago. But before we get into that, my name is Joe DiMatteo, uh, clinical nutritionist, pharmacist, uh, doctor of naturopathy, um, co-host of the Len and Joe Ask the Pharmacist radio broadcast. You can obtain more details by going to lenandjoe.com and viewing that. And um, I would encourage you to do so. See our viewing times plus um, other scenarios, other videos uh, that we do, teachings that Len and I have done along this line. Let's get into it. We don't have much time. Conceptually, <clears throat> vitamin D was thought of for years as being a toxic compound, can't overdo this, do minimal low doses, and um, you would save yourself grief and disaster and liver and kidney damage, etc., which was total utter nonsense. I mentioned in the last uh, viewing that back in 2004, Len and I did some intense research. We did a two-hour broadcast one day, all on vitamin D which astounded us that there was that much information, it kind of blew us away. Even in what we do and our studies and doing a radio broadcast, I was literally blown away by the advantages and the benefits of vitamin D. Hence, um, we made a prediction. It would be the most powerful nutrient. It would be headline front page news within five years. Well, it took about two to three years. By 2008, it seemed that it really began to catch fire. So let's just get into the details of what I would like to talk to you about here today. We left off with telling you the benefits um, regarding heart disease and cardiovascular disease. Vitamin D, and I don't want to get into the real semantics of the details, but 25 OH vitamin D levels measured in nanomoles for right now so when you have a blood lab done, you should request one, by, by the way, to have a 25 OHD level done. Why? Because it will impact your health. I went over earlier in the previous broadcast prostate cancer, breast cancer, bladder cancer risks and rates. Um, uh, all cause mortality, all cancer rates and risks on a women uh, study, a woman study that was done out in Nebraska showed that even minimal amounts, 1,100 IUs supplemented daily over, a, I forget what the years, uh, the span of time was, 35% incidence of all types of different cancer. Okay, let's move on to today. Heart disease. There's literature that shows right now a lot of misconceptions. Uh, medicine tells you it's all about the evil cholesterol, and cholesterol should be rock bottom low, and that's how you prevent heart disease. I cannot tell you that that there's not literature that supports that statins that lower cholesterol um, reduce heart disease because that is true, it does. Uh, but that's almost an after the fact. The way most Americans eat, lack of antioxidants in their diet, a very poor diet, a lot of saturated animal fats, a lot of sugar, a uh, highly refined diet, low supplemental support. Um, that's really the major culprit. And there are other issues, C-reactive proteins, uh, elevated homocysteine, elevated lipoprotein, little weight. It's not as simple as just cholesterol. But this discussion is on D. Well, what did vitamin D show us? Vitamin D shows us that it reduces the rate of atherosclerosis. The lower your vitamin D levels are, the higher the rates of atherosclerosis, plaque forming on your artery walls. The lower your vitamin D status, the higher the rates of heart disease. We also found an observational study that showed that Folks that had higher levels of vitamin D, overall, they had less heart attacks than MIs, myocardial infarcts. Huge link. I believe there's two nutrients. Well, well, there's really three. More than that, but vitamin C, buffered vitamin C ascorbates play a key role to cardiovascular health and our atherosclerosis. Number two, cardiovascular disease is closely linked in atherosclerosis and hardening of the artery wall loss of accommodation of the arteries to vitamin K, lower the vitamin K status, the firmer, the harder your arteries become, which is not what you want. You want a plastic, pliable scenario. And vitamin D. 
frailty in the elderly is associated with low vitamin D status. In other words, falls <clears throat> and just a lack of resilience in the elderly are associated with lower levels of vitamin D. You raise vitamin D status, we have less frailty. Um, we find that vitamin D can affect inflammatory conditions. That in general terms, the lower the rates of vitamin D, the higher the inflammation in the body. It's believed that it somehow modulates what are called inflammatory cytokines. What that really means to you is proteins that are produced by the liver as an indirect response, we're not even real sure, or result or an indicator of inflammation in the body. So the more this inflammation you produce, it makes you more susceptible to degenerative joint disease, heart disease, cognitive impairment, <clears throat> mental decline, the more inflammation your body produces, the worse off you are. Well, vitamin D seems to be a modulator. We explained in the previous viewing that vitamin D doesn't just boost the immune system, it moderates and modulates the immune system. It can tone down an aberrant, out of control immune system that is self-attacking, but it, yet at the same time it can raise an immune system to improve immune status. We also find that it relates to high blood pressure find that folks that have a reading on their vitamin D levels of over 42 uh, nanograms um, have a 67% reduced incidence of developing hypertension. Now, I don't know that we can use vitamin D, quote, as a treatment to hypertension, but what we do find is that the higher your vitamin D status is over the course of your life, the less prone you are to developing. So it can be used in the preventative sense, sense as well. Type 2 diabetes risk is diminished, the better your vitamin D status. A recent study that was just released even showed that in already <clears throat> developed diabetes, full-blown diabetes, that raising your vitamin D status and levels to a more normative range <clears throat> actually increased pancreatic cell production. Your pancreas out of the beta cells, the islet cells, produce insulin, which help to manage your blood glucoses. It improved the rate of production by, I believe, up to 50%, number one. Number two, in type 2 diabetics, number two, it improved peripheral sensitivity, meaning you have to have sensitivity to, with your insulin receptors on your cells to receiving and interacting with glucose, taking it into the cell. So insulin sensitivity goes up and actual production from the pancreas goes up when you raise your vitamin D status. It's also known and shown that over the course of time that a lower vitamin D status in an adult population was associated with a higher incidence of type 2 diabetes development. We know that bone health is obviously associated with vitamin D status. Osteoporosis rates are significantly higher with lower vitamin D levels. We know that there's altered and deficient muscle function with, and I don't want to get into the details of that, but just in general terms. So you find that it affects the cardiovascular system, inflammatory conditions, um, um, immune conditions, autoimmune conditions. The list, this is not exhaustive by any stretch of the imaginations. It is to educate you. Um, certainly I'm going to encourage you for more details what you should do following uh, this viewing. But let's talk a little bit more about TB. Tuberculosis rates go up the lower the vitamin D status. Rheumatoid arthritis rates are higher, the lower over the lifetime vitamin D status. Multiple sclerosis, MS, higher rates with lower vitamin D status. Inflammatory bowel disease initiation is associated or is more prevalent in a population that has lower vitamin D status. Now, medicine and medical people tell you, well, you can't affect cause and, cause and effect here. You, you be the judge. The, the information is overwhelming. Mixed connective tissue disorders diminish with higher the rates of vitamin D, vitamin D. Autoimmune conditions, type 1 diabetes onset in young children are lower when the mother's maternal status of vitamin D is higher. So you can actually affect the potential development of type 1 diabetes in your child um, if you have lower levels of vitamin D versus higher levels. Higher the levels when mom's carrying a baby, the lower the rates. We also know that in young children there are lowered rates of type 1 diabetes onset and autoimmune conditions the higher their vitamin D status. We're out of time. Thanks for tuning in. Go to lenandjoe.com for details or mscompounding.com. Thanks for tuning in.